So Webflow just announced some massive updates to Webflow apps and their developer API. The changes that they announced are going to be absolutely game-changing when it comes to building more advanced things inside of Webflow. And that's what I want to talk about in today's video. So without further ado, let's get into it. Friends, what is going on? Welcome back to the channel. Now, I am super pumped about this video today because as a lot of you probably know, Webflow just announced Webflow app updates and now webflow apps has been in beta since last year but the changes that they have announced today are going to make a massive step forward when it comes to building more advanced things inside of webflow so there are a few things that i want to cover first of all let's go over some examples of webflow apps then i also want to briefly talk about the updates that they announced in regards to their developer api and what that will mean for webflow apps and then i'll also share my two cents on where i think webflow apps is going to go with all of that being said at least dive straight into the first point, which is to check out some of the brand new Webflow apps. Firstly, when you log into the designer, you'll see that you've got a new extension now, which is the app extension. In here, you'll be able to see a list of all of the third-party apps that you can use natively inside of Webflow. Now, as you can see, I've already installed a few, but if you want to go ahead and check out what apps are available in the app marketplace, you can simply jump in here. As soon as you find an app that you want to integrate on your site, all you need to do is click on add to site, give all of the relevant pages permission and you'll be good to go. Now, I've been playing around with some of the new Webflow apps and there's some really awesome ones in there. The first one is Unsplash. Now, if you've ever used stock images in your Webflow sites, you'll know the tedious process of having to download them, then upload them to Webflow, and then you'll have to add them in there and then you'll need to format them. This process has now gotten a lot easier because you can use the Unsplash app to simply go and search through different stock image and then you can automatically add it to your site by clicking on the image that you find. Now, what I liked about the Unsplash app is that it actually has the search functionality that will allow you to access their entire database of photos so if you have a website that is about videos then you can simply jump in here you can search by orientation so if you're looking for an image in portrait mode you can then just filter out all of the images that fit that criteria and then it's just a matter of clicking on the image and it will automatically add it to your webflow site now besides unsplash there are also apps like jasper ai that you can use to speed up your content creation process you can simply launch this app and then it will automatically start improving your copy with the power of AI. Now besides some of these utility apps as I consider them, there are also apps that really allow you to build things that were previously not possible inside of Webflow. Now one of these apps is FinSuite Table. What FinSuite Table allows you to do is to build semantic HTML tables inside of Webflow. Now semantic HTML tables has been in huge demand simply because it gives you a lot of SEO benefits and you can build things like pricing tables and so on so the way it works is you can either import data from a spreadsheet or upload it from a CSV or in my case I can just build it from scratch and once I am done configuring it all all I need to do is to click on insert table component on page and what that will do is it will then automatically add my table into the designer now from here if we inspect the element you'll be able to see that it actually just drops in an HTML component that we can now go ahead and edit in the same way that we would edit any other component that we add to our designer. For example, if I wanted to go ahead and change the color of the table head, I can just jump in there and change the color to whatever I want. And this will allow us to create a table that we could previously not build with the native Webflow features. Now, the reason why this is such a big deal is because in the past, whenever you wanted to add things like elements into Webflow, we would rely on Webflow to build these. There was no way really for any third-party company to create their own elements that we can use. But with FinSuite Table, they have now essentially opened up their designers for third-party developers to create their own elements that they can now add to the designer. And this freedom will allow us to 
build a whole bunch of additional things that are currently not possible inside of Webflow. Now with this update, Webflow has launched 20 new apps and I encourage you to go and check them all out. I'm gonna be making some more in-depth reviews into specific apps in future videos, but I, there's one more app that I wanna show you that is absolutely phenomenal, especially if you're someone that watches my channel a lot and that is the member stack app. Now, if you have ever built a member stack site inside of Webflow, you'll know that there are a lot of tedious steps involved with getting everything up and running. For example, you will have to go through your site and manually tag different things like buttons or sections that you want to hide. And that often leaves a lot of room for error. There's a lot of copy and pasting, a lot of going back and forth with the documentation, but with the native member stack app, this process has gotten a whole lot easier. The way it works is that you now simply launch the member stack app, you click on the element, for example, my get started button, and then you can simply look up the attributes that you need. So for example, if I want this get started button to be my login button, I can simply jump in here. I can click on the modal dropdown. I can select the action and then I can just click into here and what will happen is it will automatically apply my data attributes to that button that is for one going to make the process of setting up these sites so much easier secondly if you are brand new to webflow or member stack then this is also going to be significantly user friendlier because you are using a no-code tool in order to set all of this up and this is just another great example of how webflow apps is actually going to make building very complex sites in webflow more efficient now, as I said, Webflow has launched with a bunch of new apps that I encourage you to check out. Uh, I've already seen a few that haven't launched in the app marketplace yet. For example, FinSuite Attributes. There's going to be some fun stuff with Wiz. And so I think the trajectory for us to see new apps launched on the app marketplace and Webflow is going to increase over time. And all of these new apps is essentially going to expand what we can do directly inside of Webflow. And so this brings me to the second main point, which is the update that Webflow has made to their API. Now, this could get slightly technical, but in the past, whenever you wanted to work with the Webflow API, you were somewhat limited to what you could do. For example, you could work with the CMS, e-commerce, user accounts. You could also set up webhooks and you know trigger certain types of events. However, when it came to actually manipulating the designer in a certain way, you couldn't really do that. With the new updated API, First of all, Webflow has given developers access to the designer API, which will make it possible for people to build apps that can essentially affect the designer inside of Webflow. So similar what we saw with things like Unsplash or FinSuite Table, which is a huge deal, but they've also made some updates to their REST API. So now besides just being able to affect um, the CMS, you'll also be able to do things with forms or pages and sites. And basically what this means is that Webflow has really opened up the entire tool to developers so that they can build new exciting apps for us. Now, what does all of this mean for someone like you and me using Webflow on a day-to-day -day basis? Now, Webflow is hands down the best design tool when it comes to building websites. But if we're being honest, every once in a while, there are certain limitations that creep in. I think the HTML tables is a great example of something that was very much desired by the community, but they just didn't have a native solution. Now that Webflow is opening up the platform to third-party developers, Companies like FinSuite can come in and actually create a solution for us that we can then start using immediately. That means that we are going to hopefully see more companies come in and solve for use cases that Webflow currently doesn't solve natively. As a result of that, we should be able to build more complex sites without the added complexity of having to write code as a workaround. Another huge perk on top of all of that is that if you are a Webflow freelance or, or a Webflow studio, the these apps will now allow you to expand what you can offer your clients. Now, sometimes you run into situations where clients might not want to use Webflow because there are certain types of features that don't exist natively. But now with third party companies creating these tools and these apps and these integrations, you will be able to break through some of the limitations that Webflow has, essentially making it easier for you to attract more clients and to also upsell them on more things. Now, as of right now, the Webflow app marketplace is still pretty new. News. So no one really knows where things will go with it. However, this looks super promising because if the Webflow app marketplace develops in the same way that the Shopify app marketplace develops, then what 
I think we will see is a win-win for everyone in the community. First of all, I think we're going to see just more things being able to be built inside of Webflow, which is fun for everyone. Second of all, I think the freelancer and agency community around Webflow will benefit from this immensely. If we just look at Shopify developers, I always hear them upselling a whole bunch of third party apps and plugins to people wanting to build Shopify sites. So I'm kind of expecting to see that here as well with plugins like HubSpot and Unsplash or whatever else might be out there. And then finally, it will also create huge opportunities for developers to make some good money by building custom apps for Webflow. So I think that we're going to see a lot of movement in this space over the next 12 months. And I think movement that will ultimately benefit all of us. So what I'm personally looking forward to are seeing some of my favorite no code tools build webflow apps now i'm particularly excited to see what finsuite does with finsuite attributes because i love using finsuite attributes um, but again similar to member snack it relies on using a lot of attributes and those types of things so seeing them build a native app that i can use directly inside of webflow would be huge i'm also excited to see what they do with a native wizard app now again another tool that is super powerful, but can be intuitive if you are brand new to Webflow. So having a native app that allows you to tag different elements would be huge. Ultimately, I think we've got a lot to look forward to over the next 12 months. I'm personally super stoked about this update. Um, if you have any apps that you've tried out and you think I should do a review on, let me know in the comments down below. Other than that, thank you so much for sticking around for the entire video and I'll see you back here for the next one.